Good afternoon, everyone. I ain't got nothing but a little time on my hands right now, so I figured I'd do a video. As always, place the cross on first. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. You know, it don't matter what time of day it is. Sometimes, the Lord's Prayer, all the time, the Lord's Prayer will benefit you. No matter what. You never know what you're going to face. When in doubt, do it anyway. You understand? Pray. Pray without ceasing. The Bible talks about it. You ain't got to go into all detail and try to figure out something to pray for. Just do the Lord's Prayer. It helps you. It helps you a lot. But anyway... Something's been hitting my head a lot lately. You know, how people feel the word of God is supposed to change for them. It's kind of crazy that this concept is running rapid in the world we live in today. You know, the Bible talks about God giving people strong delusion to believe a lie to go against his word. He's going to let them. He don't, he don't let them go against his word. But his word does not change. I just posed a question about this earlier in regards to us being conformed to be accepted for Christ. We're not supposed to conform to this world. I don't know where people get that from. Like, what's that saying? Like I said, people always say. You talk about the Bible, you talk about some I'm gonna use something simple. Like a a woman being submissive to her husband. Right? I'm gonna take I'm gonna use this one, because this is used a lot. Well things are not like that anymore. Well, you wonder why the world is the way it is now. Do you understand? Because things are like that, not like that anymore. Wives are not being taught to submit to their husbands. Or just the value of marriage has dissipated all the way. Why do you think God did that? To keep everything in order. The devil is about to bring disorder. That's what he's about bringing. And he's going to bring it through stupid assumptions like... The world ain't like that no more. Things are changing. Things are changing. You remember, I'm going to tell y'all a history lesson. Somebody come to find out. I can't remember what war it is. World War I, World War II. One of them. All the men were taken and sent to war. So they left the women left to do manly duties. And that started a movement in the United States. That changed everything. Changed a lot. You understand? And it's been changing ever since. You know, I have no real problem with women entering the workforce. No problem. But some artists, all artists from the Bible, need to stay in a place. Oh, yeah, in the case you say you work and you're married. Does that mean that your husband's supposed to submit to you now? No. The Bible says, be submissive. We're supposed to love our wives. Train them up in the nurturing and the abomination of the Lord. That's another thing that's faded to the back. You know why a lot of men these days are submissive? Because the wife is doing more church than them. The wife is going to church. The wife is learning the word. The husband is not. Crazy, ain't it? The wife no more than the husband. Why is it that way? Because subverting the word of God has been happening for a long time. The Bible gives specific instructions like you present your wife a glorious temple by the washing of the word. You understand? As a man, you need to know the word of God. You need to learn it. Because if not, you're going to start being led by the woman. A lot of men don't even realize they're in submission. They don't even realize it. They don't realize they ain't even in control no more. Just passive. 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 Everything goes. I work in the moving industry. And I hear this. I know it's a saying. But I hear it a lot. And I've been hearing it often ever since I've been in the delivery business. For years now. I go to customers' houses. And the man normally does this. 
Let me talk to the wife and see what she wants. Most people are not gonna agree with me with this. You understand? They're not gonna agree with me on this. But it's the truth. It tells you who's the head. Whether you wanna believe it or not. Oh, I know what people are gonna say. No, that's just him, you know. No. Talk to her. I have no control of anything in here. Talk to her about it. Talk to my wife. Hmm. You don't think that's submissive? That's just one example. Even the way women dress these days. The Bible talks about how women are supposed to dress. Look at these days. And people wonder why the world is so lustful now. TikTok running rapid. All kind of things. They got all kind of challenges going on. And they wonder why the world is the way it is. Because women are not being taught to cover up. They're not. They're using their bodies, men too, to draw attention. Why? They're going against the word. God doesn't want a woman to be dressed as all provocative. No. He said, if you got to, the thing is, it starts because nobody's marrying, first of all. So everybody's courting. And knowing when people court, when people court, they're trying to find somebody to date. So we live in a world of dating without marriages, relationships, friendships. Oh, that's my boyfriend. That's my girlfriend. That's my babe. No marriages. So nobody's not tied down to anyone. You understand? It's like they're always looking for something better. No loyalty. But it goes back to what I was talking about. God's word remains. If you are a Christian, it's time to make changes. It goes for me and anybody else. We can't let the world change us. We can't let the world conform us to its way of thinking. You ever notice something by clothes right now? Go to a store and try to buy some loose fit pants for a man. Can't really find them. Everything's tight leg and skinny leg because the world wants you to dress this way. The world is changing. It's kind of getting hard to find basic clothing anymore. Everything's more like a unisex now. Wow. Amazing. Well, the Bible talks about a man shouldn't wear the clothes of a woman and a woman shouldn't wear the clothes of a man. Here we are this day and age. Wear what you want to wear because times are changing. Times are changing. It ain't like it used to be. I know. I know. You know too. Pay attention. Pay attention. The world wants you to change to fit the world. God wants you to change to fit who he wants you to be. And if you don't want to do that as a Christian, why call God Lord? Why call me Lord, Lord, says, says Jesus, and do not the things I commanded you. But Jesus never commanded that. Jesus is the word of God. He commanded all of it. Keep my commandments. Hmm. Keep my word. Hmm. Why not do the things I command of you? Why are people calling Lord, Lord, and not doing what he says? Not doing what the word says? Because the world says it's okay? Or oh, they sum it up, the love movement. Love. If you love someone, you let them live how they want to live. All right, then, people. Let's go back to this. If that was the case. How many people out there are parents? How many people out there are parents who have kids? So you mean to tell me? You're going to let your kids do whatever they want. Out of love. Are you going to do that? Out of love? Because you love them? They can just walk up and smack you in the face. Out of love. It's okay, baby. You can slap me, your mama. 
Oh, your dad in the face. I love you, so I'm not going to discipline you. I'm going to teach you lawlessness. I'm going to teach you how to disrespect your mother and your father. That's against the Lord. Disrespectful kids to their parents is against God. But we live in a world now. I watch movies now, man. It's crazy. Get out of my room, mom. It's okay. She, she needs her privacy. Hmm. Wow. Your kids run you. Kids do what they want to do. But the world is changing. That's why. We don't need to discipline our kids anymore. We want them to grow up lawless. With no morals according to scripture. But the world is changing. Hmm. Wow. Wow. Just imagine if the world just said it. You don't have to stop at stop signs anymore. But you know what? It's going to be some ignorant people out there that's going to start running, running stop signs. Because the world says you can stop. You don't have to run the stop sign anymore. I mean, you don't have to stop at stop signs anymore. They're going to start running stop signs and then wrecks are going to happen. Hmm. Just using some off the wall examples there are some worldly laws in place that's good for you there's some worldly laws in place that are bad for you but I'm going to tell you one, one law one person's laws one being's laws that are good for you all the way through is God's because it never changes it doesn't adapt to the changing of the times it doesn't change because it's 2021 it doesn't it doesn't tell you that two plus two is five. Such so based on something I talked about earlier, it doesn't tell you that Mr. Potato Head is no longer a mister. It is what it is. It's like saying Jesus is the daughter of God. Would that be right? No, Jesus is the son of God. He's the son of God. The son. You can't change it. But there are movies out. What if Jesus was a woman? You know, what ifs? Jesus was a man. Simple. The Bible talks about gender constantly in the Bible. Man, woman, man, woman. There's always a distinction between man and woman. The world we live in now is, oh no, there, there are 67 genders. Huh? 67 genders? How do you get that? I don't know. But I know my word says, in the beginning he made them male and female. Self-explanatory. You can't go against the truth. And that's the truth. You were made exactly how God made you. You see, the enemy plays with people's minds. Makes them think something is wrong with them. There's, there's different types of spiritual energy floating around. That's one. But the Bible talks about the spirit of truth. Then it talks about the spirit of error. Think about it. Anything that goes against God is the spirit of error. It's a lot of people, Christians, operating in the spirit of error. and don't even realize it. They fill with the spirit of error. They don't even see that they are. Because the first thing to do, the, the Bible is going to, I mean, the, the devil is going to do is, he's going to stop you from reading that word. He's going to take the word, word further and further away from you. So you can't never know the truth. He's going to take the word from you. He's going to start placing it with other doctrine. He's going to start placing it, your, for placing it with different teachers who don't teach according to the word. And so you're going to be caught up in a, the biggest deception known to man. Because God set it up this way and the devil wants to set it up his way. And a lot of people are listening to him. Yes, the world is changing. For the worse. It's not changing for the better. Nobody wants to talk about it no more. I don't know why. 
The Bible talks about it all the time. But I forgot. Most people don't read their Bibles no more. Oh, I forgot. They got their own teachers. You know, I encourage people to read the Bible. I'm not going to encourage you to read no other book. What that book, The Laws of Power. I'm not going to encourage you to read Hook Up Air Fan. I'm not going to encourage you to read anything. But I'm going to really encourage you to read the Word of God. Because it's the only book that can save you. It's weird how in schools, they give us a books to read according to what man feel we need to know. But the schools never said, hey, read this Bible. That's amazing in a bad way. How about every school incorporate the Bible into their reading plans? Hmm. Don't it make sense? They'll force your kids to read Caesar, Huckleberry Finn, Dracula, all types of books. You got to read this book over the summer. Never the Bible. Why? Our school system is under the sway of the evil one too. Whether you want to believe it or not. You understand? To me, we're at a time in life where it's time to make a choice. Are you going to live for the world and its standards? Or are you going to live for God and His? Because as you can see, the world is getting worse and worse every day. All the people who don't see it are the people who don't want to. Because they love it. They love it. He said they don't come to me because so their eyes will be open and they'll be repent. They can repent of their evil ways. A lot of people don't come to God. Why? Because they want to stay just like they are in the world. Again, be conformed to who God wants you to be. Don't let the world change you. Because it will if you let it. But there's ways to break free. The word of God is the main way. Jesus, Jesus Christ is the main way and his word is the main way and his Holy Spirit is the main way. The Bible is a spiritual book. First thing you have to realize it's a spiritual book. It's designed for your mind, body, soul, and spirit. It's designed for you to help you with everything in your life. You see, one thing about these self-help books, they come out with a new one every week. One thing about a new diet plan, they come out with a new one every week. Exercise bike, it's a new gym coming out. It doesn't matter. They come out with something new all the time. They teach you how to do the exercises. Teach you how to be a better person. Every day, there's some type of new book. There's somebody writing a new book to try to teach you how to live right. But it's a book that has stood the test of time. It teaches you everything. Everything in one book. The Bible says, body lay exercise profit little. Is that saying God doesn't want you to exercise? No. He said there's something more important than bodily exercise. You do some spiritual exercise. Reading the Bible every day. Do you some spiritual exercises. Help your mind. Help your heart. Help your soul get better. We live in a world now. Sound doctrine is starting to fade away. Nobody wants the truth anymore. Everybody wants to say what's pleasing to the ears. Let's put it like Likes, for example, YouTube followers. You know what they call people on YouTube with a lot of followers? They call them influencers. You need to be careful who you're being influenced by. It's right in your face. They call them influencers. And they pay these influencers to do what? 
influence you. You understand? Influencers. Wow. Influence you to do all kind of dumb things. It's an influencer that the, the kids love these days. And he puts on makeup. He's a man. Puts on makeup, says all kind of things he shouldn't say. And kids love him. It's funny. He's a, I don't know, influencer. It's very easy to manipulate the mind. The enemy knows this. You can change somebody's whole way of thinking by the mind. You ever saw the movie Inception? And the whole concept of the movie was to place a thought in somebody's man, mind and make it reality. They try to make it all complex. But in reality, what the, in this reality we live in, that's what they're doing. They're planting things into your mind to make it reality. Against God. Witchcraft. Sorcery. Idol worship. Covetousness. I was watching a commercial the other day. Now I don't get on drinking by no means. But I was watching a commercial the other day. And they was talking about a barber who left his... A barber who left doing something and followed his dream to become a barber. It's a Modelo commercial. And they're sitting around in a barbershop drinking Modelos. And I'm like, what? That's a barbershop commercial? I thought it was a, a commercial for a bar. You see how times are changing? Right before your eyes? Think about it now. But then they'll say, don't drink and drive. But drink at this barbershop. You see how the world is? Well, the Bible sums it up, be sober-minded. He said, those that be drunken, be drunken at night. Or some be drunken in the daytime. Be sober-minded. Let me break it down. There's a time and a place. God has given you a home to do a lot of things to enjoy your family with. Still don't overindulge, even if you're at home. I don't care if you're at home. You don't need to get drunk at your house neither. But I learned this over time. You gotta be careful. The enemy don't want to make everything okay. Well, the Bible says you can drink, so get drunk. Do you understand what the Bible says? Be sober-minded and be not drunk and with wine with its excess. But that, that's how the world tells it. They advertise a new alcohol every day. Seltzer water. This, that, that, that. Especially when summertime gets close. They start advertising everything. You don't know, you know one of the movements that was the craziest movement I noticed, and I used to tell people about it all the time. Bacon. Bacon. It's a Subway commercial. And if one dude got a Philly cheese steak and another dude got a turkey sandwich or something like that. And he's like, I got this. Well, I got bacon. Like, bacon makes everything better. Bacon is one of the meats that God does not want us to eat pork. It's a fact. My wife showed me a video this morning. A woman took a pork chop and she poured Coca-Cola on it and all kind of worms and disgusting things are coming out of it. But take pork, just pork. The world teaches you pork is okay. You understand? Pork, just something simple as pork. Don't you find it odd that they push pork more than anything? More bacon to your hamburger. More bacon. Bacon, bacon, bacon. Bacon. Something simple as bacon. They can make you want bacon by keep showing it to you. Bacon. 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 That's the word for you. Like, for example, why do people make hams 
for Christmas and Thanksgiving. I'll wait. Why? Why is a ham and a turkey important for those two days? Look it up. I would advise you to look it up and see why people eat hams for Thanksgiving or Christmas. What's the significance of a ham? I bet you don't know. But I bet you, your whole life, when you go to the store around Thanksgiving and hot, Thanksgiving and Christmas, you're gonna see turkeys and hams flooded. Why can't you fix a turkey anytime? Why they want you to make a specific bird, a specific type of meat for this day? There's some questions you just gotta ask yourself in regards to the world. What's up with the Easter Bunny? Hmm. What's up with Santa Claus? What if Valentine's Day start? What's up with all this? It's sometimes you gotta ask yourself questions. And guess what? God give you the answer. You know, a lot of people be like, you shouldn't research. <sighs> Why? Why shouldn't you research? Because they want you to stay blind. I'm not saying God doesn't want you to have other types of knowledge besides his word. But his word is the only one that's going to protect you. The only one that's going to save you. You understand? It's good to know your enemy and how he works. It's good to know that. Why don't churches encourage none of the days in the Bible? Because times changed. That was the old school. That's the main excuses. The main excuses is we don't even know. I don't even know where to begin. I don't even know where to begin to start celebrating God's holy days. I had to look it up to really see how it works. They say it starts in the church. But why are the churches pushing this issue? Times are changing. But God's word does not change. He said, as often if you do this, do it in remembrance of me. Tell it to your kids. Tell it to the next generation. The Passover. Tell it to them. They stopped telling them. The world has stopped. The world started embracing everything except what the Bible talks about. That's why God is a forgiving God. It's not necessarily our fault. But to whom much is given, much is required. Right now, this day and age, you can find a, you can download a Bible app, you can get a Bible at the drop of a hat for free. You ain't gotta pay for a Bible as long as you got a phone, but you can go get one. You understand? But it's easy, knowledge is there. There's people putting videos up there telling you the truth all the time. You ain't gonna have no excuse. This generation is not gonna have any excuse to why they don't know the truth. You understand? Really pay attention. Why? They'll make sure you celebrate Valentine's Day. You ought to see the uproar about Mardi Gras in the city of Mobile because they didn't have it this year. Hmm. I wish people were like that with regards to Jesus' word and the uproar. Valentine's Day. Uproar. Easter coming up. Uproar. Uproar. Fourth of July. Uproar. Halloween. Uproar. Christmas. How uproar? Thanksgiving. Uproar. God's days? Silent. We don't even know where to begin. And that's the truth. I don't even know where to begin. But God says his words never change but the world's changing so what did God want us to do 
as followers of Christ and followers of the word of God to institute change in regards to the word of God. He said, we are the light, right? We are the light of this world. God called us out of darkness to his marvelous light to do what? Shine. How do we shine? We start putting things back in order. Why? So people can know the truth. Why is, isn't the Sabbath day pushed? The world has embraced Sunday worship. The world has embraced it. The world has embraced it. You got to hear what I'm saying. The world has embraced Sunday worship. Why? All through the New Testament, they talk about the Sabbath day, how they preached on the Sabbath day, how they went into a synagogue on the Sabbath day, how they went into a temple on the Sabbath day. The Sabbath day, preaching was going on on Saturdays, on the Sabbaths. Why? Ask yourself, why does the whole world embrace Sunday worship? Sunday, it just didn't even sound right. You pass by some signs on the in the in the neighborhoods and on church be like sun worship. You know they abbreviate the Sunday. They put sun worship. That just they don't sit right with me. Sun worship? I think not. I believe God wants me to one day start a church. If it's His will, I'm ready. But guess what? It's gonna be on Saturday. I'm gonna have to get in the program. I have to break free. Saturday worship. And I can make it last from however long I want. You stay at church to six. They say the Sabbath day starts from six Friday night to six Saturday night. So it's not that much to give reverence and give honor to God. To six in the afternoon on Saturday. Give God some time. Give God some glory. Give yourself some rest. But Sabbath days are not. He said they profane my Sabbaths. And look at the word. I'm just saying. Don't y'all ask yourself questions like that? Sunday. And we even know the truth. Every work day starts over on Sunday, the first day of the week. Why? Don't you ask yourself questions? And then you come to find out that the Catholic Church changed the days. Why? Why did they change the day from the Sabbath on Saturday to Sunday? Why did they change it? To please the pagans. You do know that, right? That's why they did it. They wanted to please the pagans. We've been doing a lot to please pagans as Christians. And you know, the Catholic Church is so powerful. It's like what they say goes. Hmm.